We are live. What it is, what it is, what it is, what it is. Peace, love, harmony, and light. Man, peace and love to all the gods. How y'all doing out there? We are about to get into this build. All right, this um should be. Let me turn this down. This should be um by all means um the final read from this book. All right, uh, Negro Question, part six, and that's um, the 13 black colonies, all right? So we are about to um, do the final read. I think we should be able to get through these pages right here, so it's not a lot. We are gonna do that. While I give you guys some time um, to log in, just wanna give thanks to the great spirit, wanna give thanks to my ancestors, man, for always using me as a vessel to put in this work. I want to thank each and every one of you for always tuning in. You feel me? So with that being said, Shalom, Aloha, Mabuikwa, Sakpase, Osio, Galito, what the deal is, Wagoan. Let's get into this. Let's get into this, family. Do me a favor. Take the link and go ahead and um, share that on your respective platforms. You know what I mean? And um, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you would like to subscribe, by all means, Click the subscribe button if you a lot of people always say well chief i don't get the notification well there's a reason for that you have to click on the notification bell all right so you could get that so we're going to conclude that all right and uh we're gonna we're gonna lit i'm trusting we're gonna conclude this bill with a bang all right so please 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 um spread the word spread the word all right um even before we begin let me just give a couple of um shout outs this portion of this build is brought to you by because you know we got to support our own you feel me we got to support our own so here we go go check it out right now www.originaltribalwear.com all right it's um our own tribal wear um tribal wear apparel and uh this is um my sister miss mohawk and her family out there in california doing their thing I've never met the sister personally, but she has a great man, a great personality, and uh, her energy is great. And um, that's just what it is, man. That's just what it is. All right, so go ahead and support. Check the um, check out her um, website, www.originaltribalwear.com, and you have men's clothing, women, and children. So let me just browse through it real quick. All right, those right there, definitely um, for the sisters. Y'all need to get those, right? Beautiful pieces, um, Anion Weir, original, all right? I, I, I kind of made the, you know, the, the, I kind of made the list up there in terms of the models, you know, making my debut, you feel me? So here we are. Check it out, check it out, check it out, all right? We got to support our own family. We got to support our own. That's how we start, all right? That's how we start. You dig? That's how we start. That's how we start. Okay. Go to the website, check it out. Also, this channel, this um, build is also brought to you by, you know, our, uh, another sister doing her thing. Our sister, you know, Yasini presents, you know, um, Simple Stoned. And um, that's a beautiful concept right there, Simple Stoned. And, uh, you know, welcome to Simple Stone, where every stone is customized just to fit you. All right, so um, well, just for you. So all those, um, I'm gonna put those in the link. Support that, you know, for those of you who are looking for, you know, jewelry, whether it may be stones for your your fingers, your wrists, you know, um, bracelets, you know, pendants. You know what I mean? By all means, that's what I do. You know, I support our own because that's what we're supposed to do, man. You know, we support each other. You know, they um they provide their service for me, and in return, I promote their business. That's called battering. You know, we're going back into the battered system, and that's what we are doing. We don't really have to use cash. You know what I mean? So it's all about, like I tell people, everything don't always have to be cash or fiat currency. We could find ways to support each other. The only thing is I, I got problem with people who only want to take, 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 take. They always, they always want you to do for them, and they never want to do for you. They never offer anything. It's all about them. You see what I'm saying? And that's the type of energy I personally don't vibe with. So I support those like that who support me. You dig? So here we go. www.simplystoned.webs.com. 
I will put the website in the link you got on the products, the product section. All right. You could click on that. You have um, the donations for everything is on the site. Check it out. All right. So I will put it so you could browse the, the um, browse the sites. And uh, that's what it is. Just showing love. Just showing love. I like. To, I love to support our own. So let's get back to the bill. We're gonna start reading. Okay. We're gonna start reading. Let's get into this. All right. <clears throat> and uh, I have a quick comment to make. I I put a post on um on on you know you know YouTube got the community you know um page or section where you could just put pictures or put put posts. And I put a post earlier and, um, you know, someone made a comment about, you know, they didn't subscribe to my channel to hear how, you know, white people and black people got along. Like I said, this is my platform. All right. I'm going to reiterate. This is my platform. And I talk about what I want to talk about. I post what I want to post. If it's not for you, do yourself a favor and unsubscribe. All right. I'm not here to play no games with nobody. I'm not obligated to do anything. I do what my how my spirit move me, and that's where it's at. You feel me? It's simple as that. And I'm not gonna mention that again. I'm not begging anybody to subscribe to this. If the information is not for you, hit the unsubscribe button and do what you gotta do. But I'm gonna handle this the way I wanna handle that. Okay? I'm looking for peace and love and people that's vibrating on a high frequency. I ain't got time for the hate. All right? All that stuff is an illusion, and I'm not gonna feed that type of machine. You feel me? So with that being said, let me give a few shout outs to a few of you guys that came on. You know what I mean? Peace and love to you, God. All right. So let's just give everybody a quick shout out real quick, real quick. No doubt, no doubt. Just dropping a lot of information. You know, um, you're absolutely welcome. And, and, and even with I'm bringing, I'm bringing the books, like I tell people, still cross reference. You know what I mean? Do extra research. Don't just say, well, you know what? What Chief Kalanago is bringing to the platform oh, is the, uh, the absolute truth. I'm not saying all that. All I'm just saying is sometimes what I'm bringing to you, you know, could be part of a bigger bill, you know what I mean, for you to find some more information because people have no idea how deep this is. And sometimes when you think you know something, it, sh it, 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 show it literally shows like we don't know anything. So that's why I tell people, all right, I, I, I'm not aware of everything, okay? So I'm doing my best to bring as much information to you so you could it could lead you to doing more research. Maybe there are some things you could expose me to or introduce me to. I'm open for that, all right? We are all learning, and I just love to study and share things, share information, all right? So that's about it. Let me see. So I'm just giving you guys a couple of shout-outs, all right? Greetings to all again, because once I start reading, my head is going to be in that book. All right, my head is gonna be in that book. All right. All right, there we go. All right, family, so we're gonna start reading right now. My head is gonna be, um, is gonna be down in the book. So if I don't get a chance to, um, to respond to your comments immediately, please. I, it's not intentional, I'm not ignoring you, it's just that my head is gonna be in, all right? So with that being said, listen, man, this, this final reading of the book right there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conclude that with a ban. I'm talking about with a ban, just to solidify everything I've been telling y'all. Like I said, I'm just here to show, show the work and show and prove. That's it. You feel me? That's it. And for those of you who wish to support, man, you already know by all means, please show your appreciation. That's what it's about. Okay? The laws of reciprocation. You know what I mean? It's all we share and we love and we do what we do for each other. All right. Here we go. All right. Let's do this. Let's get into this reading here. All right. Cool. <clears throat> okay. And once again, we are reading um, the Negro in Question, part six, the Black Colonies. We already did part um, one video, part two video, and this is the third build. All right. The final build on that book. Okay. Now. A description follows of the 150 rebels which Mr. Smith took at Lincoln, York, and Lancaster prisons in, um, in October 1746. 1746. The name, age, profession, county, and, and stature of each 
with remarks were given in every case of the 150, 15 were women, and three of those Cameroons from Lochber, number 145 was Barbara Cornwell, 19 Perch Shire, and she was thus described, red hair, clever, number 43, 143, Margaret Dykes, 22, no occupation, lift go, lift go, is singled out for the, dis um, the distinction of being well looking. Number 57, Isabel Hamilton, 50, comes from Mussing Musselburg. Fortunately, all of them could sew, spin, and knit. Useful qualifications for female colonists. An exact list and description of 150 rebel prisoners shipped out um, shipped at Liverpool on board the veteran John Ricky, master for the Leeward Islands, which were taken near Antigua, the 20th June last, by the by the Diamond Privateer Paul. Marcel, commander, and carried into the Martinico. The 30th June, 1747, evidence continues on next page. Here we go. So we have a few of the names here, all right? First name, last name, age, and remarks, right? You have Robert Adam, you have William Bell, you, and they have, their, 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 they have um, their complexions, brown, black, all right? Dougal Campbell, brown complexion. Alexander Katana, black, black Rudy. Um, you know what? Let me see if I could just put that in focus so I don't have to read all these names. Here we go. So, you know, we could see. There we go. All right. So it doesn't make sense me reading all these names when I could just try to put it in focus. Okay. All right. Now, let's proceed. The Highlands are generally um, diminutive with brown complexions and almost and almost always with black curled hair and dark eyes. Annals of Caledonian, um, Picts and Scots by Joseph Ritson, Volume 2, Edinburgh, Ward D, Laying, 1828. Footnote, page 7 um, and 27, the description of Joseph Ritson matches this ship's manifest that the original Scots were brown skin or black people. Okay, and they have some images here. Let me see if I could bring that a little closer. It says, um, craft of the map. They were showing the map of the names that we looked at yesterday, all right? And it says, image from the tomb of Alas there, um, Kruta, Macledo, the Highlander, image location, illustration of the Scottish history. There are two ships manifest that list a descendant of the McLeod clan, Alexander McLeod, page 137, and Richard McLeod, page 130. Alexander McLeod is described as a brown-skinned black man. This ship's manifest and the eyewitness account of former English Secret Service agent John McKay, page 162, agree to the blackness of the original founders of the 13 colonies. Who are you going to believe? Don't believe me, believe the eyewitnesses and the artifacts. Here we go with a few more names. All right, see if you could make them out. Okay, good, we have a little focus here. We have a little focus. Okay, so those are some of the names. We looked at a few of them yesterday. So if you have any of those so-called last names, those are Scottish, Irish, or British, all right? And they, and they didn't come from the pale Britons. They came from the so-called dark-skinned, brown-skinned, tawny, black Britons, okay? This ship's manifest describes the Highlanders, McLeods, and Stuarts as being black, which is consistent with Boyd Dawkins' verbal map and the artifacts. So far, we have a trifecta order of three. We have an eyewitness, Professor Boyd Dawkins. We have untampered images, black Scots, and a description of the Scots on a ship's manifest. You still don't believe me? You still don't believe me, do you? Well, I have.
I have provided a paper issued by the Institute of, Institute of Evolutionary Biology, um, Barcelona, Spain, that should finally convince you, come see. Pub, um, Barcelona, Spain, published in Nature, July 2006. Author, Dr. Charles Lau, Laluza. Genetic tests reveal that a hunter-gatherer who lived 7,000 years ago had the unusual combination of dark skin, dark hair, and blue eyes. Everything that this article says is correct, but the blue eyes, um, but the blue eyes. Uh, um, I'll take it, continued. Two hunter-gatherer skeletons were discovered in the cave in the mountains of Northwest Spain in 2006. The cool, the cool dark conditions meant, meant the remains called Labrana one and two were remarkably and preserved, were remarkably and well preserved. Scientists were able to extract DNA from a tooth of one of the ancient men and sequence his genome. The term, the team found that the early Europeans was most closely genetically related to people in Sweden and Finland. But while his eyes were blue, his genes reveal that his hair was black or brown and his skin was dark. This was a result that was unexpected, said Dr. Laluza slash Fox. These guys are lying. They already knew this. Didn't Professor Boyd Dawkins, Benjamin Franklin, Dr. Albert Churchward, Professor Huxley and, Win and Winshiel, Winshiel Alexander tell you the same thing? Didn't the ship's manifest dated 1715 and 1745 give you the same identical description of these black highlanders? Isn't that what the Negro question part four, the missing link said? I have a greater witness than this, come and see. Okay, here we go with a few more names. All right, get that in focus, get that in focus, let's see. Here we are. Okay, I'm trying to see if I could get this in focus. All right. So you have um, convict ships, the veteran political prisoners continued. Let me see if I could put my finger here if it will just sharpen up the image. Uh, come on, mate. All right, here we go. All right. So we have George Samuel Brown. Well, you could see all what it is and you could see all the complexions. All right and the so-called last names. All right, let's continue reading. Information can be found in the book, Jacobite um, Gleanings Glinin, from the State Manuscripts, page 48. Author, J. Macbeth Forbes, Harvard College Library. This ship's manifest plus the eyewitnesses account of the former English Secret Service agent, John McKay, page 187, is the only two documents that I have seen that gives a physical description of the princes, noblemen, and barons of Scotland. I know you I know you find this hard to believe, but I have a greater witness than this. Come see. All right, we've seen those pictures already. All right, of King Stuart, King Charles I, and King Charles Stuart II. All right. And of course, we had already, um, we, we blew up, I found one of those maps and uh, we looked at the names. So as you could see, he's pretty much reiterating the information in terms of the map, all right? Showing the Stuart right there, Stuart, Stuart right here, okay? Now, the historians and anthropologists of the generation are currently fighting a war of words with the dead historians and scholars of antiquity, the past. A war that the dead are winning, hands down. The testimony of the dead scholar is, pro is, prov is proven to be more reliable than the testimony of the living. How can this be? This, equivalent, this is equivalent to a dead lion being greater to a living dog. All right. Duncan, King of Scots, 1034 to 1040 AD. <clears throat> King Duncan of Scots is depicted as a black man, and once again, he comes from the Highlands of Scotland. This echoes the words of Professor Boyd Dawkins, our fathers pushed the blacks west 
and south into the highlands of Scotland. Um, a descendant of King Duncan is listed on page 125, Robert Duncan. This black Duncan was deported into the um, colonies on the convict ship. The Elizabeth and um, the Elizabeth and Anne, 1716. Let's visit the tomb of a dead Highlander by the name of James Douglas. The names of his son and daughters will be listed, but they won't be attached to the images. All righty, so they're showing a few pictures here. Uh, um, I guess that's um, from the tomb. Okay. I think, what's that name here? Douglas? Okay. <clears throat> it says, that's the Douglas they're talking about here, all right? It says, Tomb of James Douglas the Seventh, Earl of Douglas, Tomb, Location St. Bre Brady's Church, Lanarkshire, Scotland. The tomb of James Douglas with his wife Be um, Beatrice and their, ten ch and their 10 children, William, James, Archibald, her, John, Henry, Margaret, Beatrix, James, and Elizabeth. All right, and they have a picture right here of the daughter, daughter, um, Beatrice, son. All right. I cropped the image so that you could get a very good look at Lady Beatrice Sinclair Douglas, page 144, and the other Douglas clan members that were carved on the tomb. You tell me I am hallucinating. Is the writer suffering from a strong de um, delusion? The, co um, the colonial history of the United States and European history is one of the greatest hoaxes that has ever been perpetuated on the people. Our children are herded into the government-sponsored school system and forced-fed a history that never happened. To add insult to the injury, our children are receiving failing grades for not remembering and regurgitating the lie. I could do this all day with these ancient Scottish clan maps and the original artifacts, but I should have been through with this book three months ago. Let's look at the map to see if the Sinclair clan lived in the Highlands. All right, and this is um, the map right here. And uh, looking for the Sinclairs. Okay, yep, all the way to the top right here, okay? Now here we go. The wife of Douglas was a Sinclair. So I went to the map of ancient Scotland clans and looked for her family for her family in the Highlands. I followed the verbal map of Professor Boyd Dawkins into the Highlands of Scotland and located the Sinclairs. Once I saw the blackness of Lady Sinclair, I was okay with it because it matched the verbal map of Professor Boyd Dawkins on page three, but I have a greater witness than this, come see. Genetic tests reveal that a, that a hunter-gatherer who lived 7,000 years ago had the unusual combination of dark skin, dark hair, and blue eyes. It has surprised scientists without, um, who thought that the early inhabitants of Europe were fear. Dark in code, dark in code word for black. The dark-skinned European was killed off in wars or was deported to the colonies. These statements validate the claims of this book, and that is, the Black Scots were the original founders of the 13 colonies. I have this nagging question that keeps popping in my mind. What will, it, what will be the response of the university scholars? How can they defend the history that they teach when the eyewitnesses and the artifacts of, um, object to the assessment of the past. The educational system of the United States and Europe is hanging in the balance. The fundamental ideology of white power was based on a lie. The government sponsored school system is teaching that the whites invaded North America, massacred the Indians, and began to import slaves into the British colonies 
in 1619. It is all a lie. Well, yes, Mr. Lee Commons, we know because it wasn't the so-called whites who came here first. I do agree with that. The history of the United States and, and Europe is beginning to come across like some huge movie script. Let's um, revisit Robert the Bruce, the Highlander King of Scotland. Skull of King Robert the Bruce, Ontarian Museum. Robert the Bruce was a black scout based on the nasal passage of his, of his skull and the image of himself to the right. The Bruce lived in the highlands of Scotland and was black according to the European witnesses. Robert the Bruce is listed on page 124 and, and Alexier Bruce is listed on page 125 of the Elizabeth and Anne Ships Manifest. These black Bruces were deported into the um, colonies as convicts. When they tried to return the, the blacks towards to the throne of England, look at the last names on the map. Page 140, these black scots came into the 13 colonies with these last names. These are ancient things. All right. We have him again showing where the stewards was at on that map. So we've seen these maps before. All right. Ancient map of Scotland. I went back on the timeline and pulled up the list of men, women, and children that Harriet Tubman Ross rescued from the Scott, from the South. I almost fell out my chair when I saw the, the last names Ross and Stewart on the list of rescued people. Then I took a look at Harriet Tubman's parents' names and saw the names Ross and Stewart. I immediate, immediately ran to the map and saw Ross and Stewart in the Highlands or of Scotland. I reread the Writings of the European Witnesses, page 24, 27, 57, 86, 87, 88, 100, 101, 103, 111, 113, 135, and page 138. The Stuarts on the ships manifest are black. The images of the Stuart kings are black, and the Stuarts are Harriet Tubman's, um, who, that, Harriet Tubman rescued from the South were black. So once again, all right, I, I'm validating what I said before. Harriet Tubman was not an American Aborigine. She was a descendant of those Scots. She was an Israelite. She was saving her people. She was a Jacobite, all right? And she was rescuing the, 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 blood, the royal bloodline, all right? Just so y'all know. You smatter, you smatter than a fifth grader. Question, the math says that the black steward that Harriet, um, Harriet Tubman Stewart rescued um, from the South were in fact the seed of King James Stewart. What was Harriet Tubman Russ Stewart really doing in the South? This woman was rescuing the royal seed of the king, King's call Stewart, the seed of the black Highlanders. Plain and simple, Ross was one of the titles that the kings of Stewart held in, in Scotland. There is, um, there is a document on page 35, 36, and 37, and 38 of this book that is titled The Oath of Abroth. The document mentioned the Earl of Ross and Walter Stewart. The document is dated 1320 AD, which is an indication of how old these names are and it, and it disputes the argument of this modern scholar that the black Scots took on the names of their so-called um, slave masters. It appears that the whites took on the last names and titles of the deported blacks to lay claim to their land and inheritance. All right, stop here, okay? That's key. And like I said, we have to read between the lines. So right now, there's always a lot of truth within a little you know, misinformation. So right there, he's correct. The pale man took the names of those Scots that founded the 13 colonies, all right, and gave them to the enslaved or prisoners of war American Indians. So now you are thinking those names came from the pale man. No, it came from originally from those Scots, and they had to take those names because they still had to tie themselves to royalty in Britain. Hence, you have Prince Harry, Prince Charles, okay, 
those are not the, they're not the original ones. They just adapted the names. You feel what I'm saying? All right then. The seed of the black royals of Europe have been scattered into the four winds of heaven. It is written, this is the people that have been robbed and spoiled. This scripture is pointing to this generation. Also took at the, at the map showing the Scottish Highlanders and the name Ross is in there. Are you a free thinking human being? Well, I'm a, I'm a free thinking God, I'll tell you that. Can you think for yourself? What are the odds that Harriet Tubman and her family would be named Ross? Henry Stewart okay it is important to note that this man's lineal name appears on different ships manifest as a political prisoner the name William Stewart can be found on the convict ship Hawking Hawking Hill and the ship York this simple proves that Stuart royals were being rounded up and deported into the colonies as convicts. What was their crime? They believed in the divine right of kings to rule, and they tried to restore the black stewards to the throne of three kingdoms. Are you still there? Let's play the game conspiracy theory. What are the odds that the same name William Henry Stuart, Stuart appears as Secretary of State in the Amsterdam in the administration of Abraham Lincoln. Think about that. Harriet Tubman Stewart rescues a man with the name William Henry Stewart in 1854 and 11 years later, same name appears as Secretary of State of the United States minus the T. What are the odds? Are you still there? Yes, we're still here. We're still here, all right? The same day, that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, the entire family of the black stewards, stewards, stewards was savagely attacked by an assassination by the name of Lewis Powell, a 20-year-old 20, a 20 Confederate soldier. Powell slash Secretary of State William Henry Stewart, Stewart Assistant Secretary of State Frederick Augustus Stewart, Stewart and his sister, but they all lived. It was a hit on the entire administration. There is another intriguing element to this story that cannot be dismissed. When Harriet Ross Tubman and her family made it to um, Canada, they dropped the last name Ross Earl and assumed the title Stuart King. This can be can be a coincidence. Check out the names: James Stewart, William Henry Stewart, and Henry. The evidence points to Harriet Tubman Stewart and her family being the royal seed of King James Stewart. This means that Harriet Tubman Stewart and her family are the direct descendants of Prince Zara of the House of Judah. Are you still there? Because I have a greater witness than this. Come see. <clears throat> All right, right here they have an image. All right, that's the great seal of William the Conqueror, 1066 to 1087, image location, British Museum. Here we are. William the Conqueror was a black Duke of Normandy, France. Normandy is another name for France, okay? Who invaded and conquered England in the year 1066 AD. We know that he was a black, he was black because of the writing of the European scholar, Professor Boyd Dawkins. Dawkins, the French, the French were black in 1751. The black Scottish kings claimed the kingdom of France through his lineage. William the Conqueror's descendants began to call themselves by the surname William. Wilson, Wilson literally means the son of William. I have located a census from the free Negro town called Seneca, which lists blacks with the last name Wilson who were not taxed. All right, that's kind of small, but we'll see. July. Um, 1856 continued of New York 22nd Ward. The wording is small that I created a screen um, a, a spreadsheet on this next page so you could see the vital information. All right. 
and you have the names here, all right? That's the year 1855, color, black, 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 not taxed, all right, right here. So they, 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 they meshed in with the indigenous population, okay? As you could see, they were part of the Seneca village, all right? I located the name Ann Wilson on the ship's manifest of the ship York in 1739. I was able to trace the Wilson name to Scotland and some of the names on this list can be traced back to Scotland. Margaret Wilson was a martyr in Scotland in 1685. And here is a list of names from her family. John Wilson, George W. Wilson, Margaret Wilson, Samuel Wilson, Thomas Wilson, Robert Wilson, and Alexander Wilson. John and George W. Wilson's names are found on the list of the Seneca Free Negroes. In the year 1685, the Black Wilsons of Scotland lived in the royal boroughs in Castle Stuart. The Wilsons lived in a, in a Stuart castle because they were the cousins of the Stuarts. And I have already proven that the Stuarts were Black. What does this tell me about the Wilson name? These Black Wilsons who came from Scotland were the descendants of William the Conqueror, and it's possibly, and it's possible that they named their free town Seneca to mark their royal lineage. Seneca in the Hebrew tongue means son of the king. So once again, you see, you have to read between the lines. The man is telling truth, all right, but he's not telling you, well, Seneca, the village of Seneca, all right, that's up in Manhattan, the name wasn't always Seneca. So for that name to be Seneca, that means y'all took over the indigenous population there. So you see, you have to read between the lines. I mean, he's telling truth, but I could tell some of the information is biased because he's not telling all the truth, all right? Because I'm certainly sure our so-called American Indian ancestors just didn't sit around and say, well, welcome black Scots of Scotland, come take our land and call it Seneca Village. You feel what I'm saying? So, like I said, we have to read, we have to read with inner standing, okay? So we have to literally, you know, chew for those of you who, who eat meat, you know, chew the meat and spit out the bone. For those of you who don't eat meat, well, I guess you might not eat today, all right? But anyway, let's go. With the, with, with the help of 10 college um, I, um, I, interns, the Institute for the Exploration of Seneca Village focused on two primary sites. The yard of the resident name, Nancy Moore, Moore means black. Like I told y'all before, Moore means black. So I'm not even gonna get into that. So if Moore means black, why would I wanna call myself a Moore if it means black? So we're not get, but and, and a Moore just confirmed that on, on Facebook for me, which I'll do another video, all right? But anyway, this is not about the Moore, so let's proceed. And the home of William G. Wilson, a six ton, a sex ton at, at all angels, Equipostal Church, both of whom were black. Records show that Mr. Wilson and his wife, Charlotte, had eight children and lived in a three-story wood frame house. The Institute is currently seeking information on two of Wilson's on my spreadsheet, William G. Wilson and Charlotte Wilson. What are the odds that they would be searching for someone on my spreadsheet? What does this tell me? This might sound as if I have read too many conspiracy novels, but this tells me that the elite whites know the truth. So do the elite blacks, okay? I just Let me just add that in there. Why would they be searching for the Wilson in the ghetto? They either know who and where you are, or they are looking for you. The writing in this book represent my argument and objection to the history that the Texas State School Board sanctions every year. Just like Martin Luther nailed his 95 thesis to the door of the Catholic Church, I in, I in like manner nailed my thesis to the doors of the Texas State School Board. This is the organization that is responsible for the error filed history that it taught to, to black and white children across this nation. It is time to conclude this matter. See the next page. <clears throat> okay, here we are. 
This book is so intense that I have started and deleted five conclusions. And then it dawned on me that what I needed to do was let my witnesses speak one last time. So we have eight European witnesses here, all right? You have David Boyd Don Donkins, you have Winchill Alexander, page 24, you have Professor Hartsley, you have James Anderson. He's just talking about, you know, the people who are saying, basically the pale people who are saying the same thing that he's saying, all right? Just to validate, you know, the, um, the message that he's conveying, all right? These eight European scholars testified to what they knew to be the truth in their generations and that was that the blacks were the original people of Europe. We have the testimony of Professor Boyd Dawkins that gives an accurate location of the blacks that founded Britain. Professor Dawkins, page three, gives the date 449 AD for the entry of the whites into Britain. That date almost matches 450 AD, the date that the historians re on record for the white barbarian invasion of the Roman Empire. What does this tell, tell Lee? It tells me that we are looking at the same event through eyes of Professor Boyd's. Not only does, not only does Professor um, Dawkins inform the reader that the blacks were already in Britain when this white, when when he, when his white ancestors invaded the land. He also names the location of the blacks. So once again, right, which solidifies you know the point that I make to make the assertion that pale people or white people came from caves and they couldn't read and it was on all fours, that's a fallacy, okay? That's a fallacy. Because the same way not all so-called black people are the same, not all so-called white people are the same. They have different ethnicities. So if you happen to take one ethnic group and you put them in caves and you took their women to go sleep with their women, it doesn't mean that all white people were in caves. All right. Once again, that's false information. And I'm not here to promote that. All right. I'm here to drop facts. You feel me? The blacks resided in Scotland, Cornwall, Westmoreland, Cumberland, Devon, Highlands of Scotland and, and Devon. This is critical in our pursuit of the truth concerning European, European and colonial history. Benjamin Franklin gives an eyewitness account of the world order in his generation when he states the French, Italians, Germans, Spanish, Russians, and the Americans were black. Thomas Jefferson divides the white English from the black Scots in the original Declaration of Independence. Dr. Albert Church Ward reluctantly informs the reader that the blacks populated Europe and North America and thus they were the original founders. All right, remember someone who's actually an original indigenous um, in, in, um, inhabitant is, is different from a founder, all right? So they always have to use the word founder because they found us here, all right? You have to read between the lines. A settler, meaning that you came and settled, all right? Let's proceed. Dr. Churchward goes on to say that the black Europeans became extinct. This is a lie. The same way they said that the American Indians became extinct. We know that's a lie because if it was, we wouldn't be here right now. After the civil war in England, the black Scots, Irish, Welsh, and black British were deported into the colonies as convicts, indentured servants, or free men. The, blacks, the black Scots, Jacobites, or Hebrews are alive and well in the ghettos of America and the West Indies. So yes, some of them are Hebrew Israelites. Some of you are actually Hebrew Israelites. You are the Jacobites, but you are, you are from Scotland, Ireland, and Britain. Okay, the Americas is not your original land. Now granted, if we go and say, well, you know what? All people came from the Americas. If you wanna make that assertion, well, you could make that claim, but just so you know, all right? To put this in perspective. I have produced the ship's manifest that gives an accurate description of the black Jacobite Scott Highlanders as they boarded the convict ships. I have shown you, let me see, all right, there we go. I have shown you the census of Seneca village and presented you 
with the data that proves Harriet Tubman was a royal descendant, descendant of the Stuarts. I have eight cards left to play. Four aces, three kings, and one big joker. Let's look at my final hand. Come see. Man, I, I love, I love, I love poker. So let, let, let's get into this, Mr. Lee Cummings. Let's get into this. All right, let's get into this. Institute of Evolutionary Biology, Barcelona, Spain. Author, Dr. Charles um, Lalazua. No, Lalazar. Lalaza. Genetic tests reveal that a hunter-gatherer lived 7,000 years ago had the unusual combination of dark skin, dark hair, and blue eyes. This description, this description of the original blacks that populated Europe and America is, co is correct except for the blue eyes. This is what I call a suitable admission mixed with a little lie. Continued. The hunter-gatherer the hunter -gatherer skeletons were discovered in the cave in the mountains of Northwest Spain in 2006. The cool, dark conditions meant the remains called La Brana 1 and 2 were remarkably, remarkably well preserved. Scientists were able to extract DNA from the tooth of one of the ancient men and sequence his genome. The term found that the early Europeans was most closely gen um, genetically related to the people in Sweden and Finland. But while his eyes were blue, his genes revealed that his hair was black or brown and his skin was dark. You have to remember that dark is a code word for black. No. Dark is a code. Dark just basically means void of light. All right. <laughs> anyway, let's proceed. We're not going to play the semantics here. All right. African ancestry. That's the ace in the hole. All right. Pay attention. African ancestry. The ace in the hole because he said he had the ace and he had a couple of aces and then at the end he have a big joker. Right. Let's let's read. The blacks in America have suddenly developed the interest in being reunited with their family on the continent of Africa. These interests have fueled a fury of research in the, in the field of genetics and thus far has yielded some extremely surprising results. I have looked at some of the research that was done by um, the African Ancestry, Washington, D.C., and it was astonishing that the results showed that 30% of all African Americans' DNA was traced back to Europe. I began to pay close attention when I saw the results that the test produced. Some of the European nations that the African Americans DNA traced back to were identical to the research presented in this book and the Negro question part four, the missing link, take a look below. The European nations African American DNA traced back to England, Ireland. Um, come on, come on. Let's get back in focus now, focus. Wales, Britain, Scotland, Russia, Germany, and Italy. Like I tell y'all, and you will recall there are people on the internet, all right, claiming to be aboriginals, but when they did their DNA, it went back to England, Britain, Scotland, and Ireland. But yes, so you call yourself an American aboriginal, all right? And then y'all try to come at me. Like I said, don't play the games. I'll call you out, okay? If you are interested in contacting African-American um, ancestry, here is their contact info. Contact African-American ancestry. Let me give y'all the number for some of y'all real Africans here calling yourself American aboriginals, okay? 202-723-0900, all right? Because some of you are really, yes, descendants or, you know, um, descendants of England, Ireland, Wales, Brit um, Britain, Scotland, Russia, Germany, and, and the likes, okay? Now, it doesn't negate the fact that a lot of these people came and mixed in with our people, so we all might have a little, a little bit of that. So I just got to keep it 100, all right? And let's go. It's interesting that the very nations that Benjamin Franklin named as being black in 1751 are the same nations that the African ancestry is listing as places of origination for the blacks in this generation. Um, <clears throat> 84th annual meeting of American Asso um, um, Association Physical Anthropologist Research Study published Bio um, RXIV5. Dr. Lane Matheson, genealogist at Howard University. Ancient DNA may, um, makes it possible to examine populations as they were before 
and after adaptation. Dark-skinned black people arrived in Europe 40,000 40, years ago and retained their dark skin, black skin, far longer than originally thought. The article goes on to say, rather than um, lightning as previously thought, the first people retained their dark skin color. Professor um, Chris Str um, Str um, Stringer, leading anthropologist at National History Museum in London. This research adds more surprises to the remarkable comple complexity of the population relationships in ancient Europe that are through ancient DNA. The research further concluded that these dark-skinned black people were lactose intolerant. The so-called African-American is lactose intolerant. What does this mean? It means that the Europeans are trying to correct the lies that they were taught. The DNA evidence proves that the founders of Europe and the 13 colonies were a black people. The DNA evidence um, presented in this book is the final piece of the evidence that validates the book's bold statement that Europe and the 13 colonies were founded by the black Scots. And I'm not disputing that, okay? I'm not disputing that, but we still have to talk about the people who, that they met when they came here. Because when you found, that means you found people here, all right? DNA study finds London was ethnic, 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 ethnically um, diverse from the start by, by Pala Ghosh or Nosh, science correspondent BBC News, 23 November 2015. This researchers plan to <clears throat> analyze more of 20,000 human remains stored at the Museum of London, according to Caroline MacDonald, who is a senior um, curator at the museum. London was a cosmopolitan black and white city from the moment it was created following the Roman invasion 2000 years ago, all right? So once again, if London, all right, was a cosmopolitan place with black and white 2000 years ago, how is that the Caucasian man wasn't all fours in caves? Like I said, I'm here to debunk all the lies, all right? According to the Professor Dawkins, page three, in the year 449 AD, the whites invaded the land and pushed the blacks west into Scotland, Wales, Cornwall, Scotland, Ireland, and Britain. I have an arrow pointing to the date that the article from BBC News was written to show you that this is a current event. I know that the information presented in this book is shocking, not to me, but yet still, Mr. Lee Cummings, I appreciate it. I am shocked. And I am also aware that it's inconsistent, inconsistent with what we were taught in school, but it's the truth. Jeremiah the prophet wrote, Jeremiah um, chapter 16, um, verse 19, O Lord, my strength and my fortress, in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come from the end and the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity and things wherein there is no profit. This saying has come to pass in this book. The Gentiles, whites, are beginning to confess through their genetic research that they have indeed inherited lies. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't only the, the, the Gentiles who, in, who inherited lies, also the original Americans, the American Aborigines also inherited lies, okay? We have here, um, those are all the, um, the, 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 the colonies, right? I think that's what he's pointing out. Let me see if I could um, bring that in focus. Give me a second here. Uh, come on, get in focus, get in focus, get in focus. Anyway, all right, let me, let me read it, okay? Those are just the, um, the, um, the 13 colonies, so we don't have to read that again. But anyway, it says, the Highlanders are generally diminutive with the brown complexions and almost always with black curled hair and dark eyes, okay? So here we go. The Highlanders are generally diminutive and they have a few more names and they have ages, okay? Right here. Jacobites, gleaning from State Man uh, Manuscript, page 48, author J. Um, Macbeth, 
Forbes, how, um, Harvard College Library. So those are well-documented information. It doesn't mean that it's true, but it's well-documented. That's what, at least, that's what he's alluding to, okay? The only colony that was not founded by a black Scottish Highlander um, king was Georgia Colony. I have to men mention this in my conclusion to, um, to close any gaps that the government-sponsored um, scholar might use against the truth. The Hanover kings were of German descent, and according to the Benjamin Franklin essay, page 85, 86, 87, and 88, the German Hanovers were a black people. Benjamin Franklin wrote in this essay in 1751, and that time, the black Germans, King George II, was sitting on the throne of England. Like I told y'all before, brothers and sisters, okay? In 1751, you had a black king sitting on thrones. So when I keep telling y'all, we were not enslaved by the pale man. The pale man took over the game and said, you know what? Forget all that. We're enslaving everybody. Okay? Like I said, if y'all don't want the truth, man, y'all need to unsubscribe. For real. And at that time, the black German king's judge, the second, was sitting on the throne of England, and that is a fact. The original translators of the King James Bible, 1611, made a statement in the introduction on page 164 of this book. And it reads, so that if on one side we shall be um, traduced, if, if they lie on us by poopish persons at home or abroad, who therefore will um, malign us because we are poor instruments to make God's holy trueth to be yet more and more known unto the people whom they desire still to keep in ignorance and darkness. This is what happened to the entire world. We have been kept in the, in the darkness and abject ignorance. I have one final document that validates the authenticity of the ship's manifest that I have presented to you. On the next page, I would like to present to you the memoirs memories of former English um, Secret Service um, agent, John McKay Esquire. Mr. McKay served during the reign of the Queen Sophia of England, who trusted and valued his work so much that she published, she published from John McKay's original publication. Just so you know, Queen Sophia was a mulatto, okay? Just so you know that, just like, um, just like Queen Charlotte. We will read, we will, we will read the same information that Queen Sophia read, information that she did not object to, and information that she acknowledged to be true by publishing from John McKay's original work. What are you about to read will change your life forever. Come and see. He always saying, come and see. Well, we're we, 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 we gonna see now. All right, we have the memoirs. Let's see if we could bring this up here. See if we could kind of like get this a little focus here. Okay, here we go. Memoir of Stuart Services of McKay. All right, this um, takes, all right, John McKay. All right, King of William, Queen Anne and King George, including also the true secretary history of the life. So here we go. All right. Now, a description of the princes, dukes, earls and Noblemen of Scots, of Scots and Brits. One, Charles um, Lennox, page 36, Duke of Rich, um, Richmond, son of Charles I of Scotland, black complexion, much like King Charles. Two, John Lord Summers, page 48, 49, and 50, late Lord Chancellor, 1651, slash 15, well, two, 1716, brown complexion. Let me just stop and make an interjection here real quick. So when you're reading the Bible and you hear of gods and lords, those are the people that they are talking about. The Bible ain't got nothing to do with a sky daddy, okay? The Bible ain't got nothing to do with a sky daddy. They are the lords and the gods in the Bible. The Bible has a lot of different allegorical meanings, all right? And right now is like me showing y'all, bringing all, everything into fruition, all right? Bringing, putting the pieces together, all right? Daniel Earl, Earl of Nottingham, page 25 and 26, Secretary of State, a tall, thin black man. Four, 
Charles Duke of Somerset, Somerset, pardon me, pages 16 and 17, Master of the Horses, Reign of Charles II, Black Complexion. Five, John Duke of Birkenhamshire, page 19 and 20, was Earl of Mulgrave in the reign of King Charles II, Brown Complexion. We almost there, family. We almost there. We got a few more pages to go. All right. Number six, Charles of Duke, St. Auburn's, page 40, first son of Charles II, black complexion, much like King Charles. All right. Seven, John, Duke of Newcastle, page 35, Earl of Clare, before the revolution, King William created this gentleman, a, um, a duke, and gave him a gutter, black rudy complexion. All right, number eight, Hineage Finch, Lord um, Goins, Goinsey, page 90, brother of Earl of Nottingham and solicitor to the King James II, a tall, thin black man. Earl number nine, Earl of Feverham, page 98, took oath to the King Williams, a middle statute brown man. Ten. Ford Lord Grey of Work, page 103, governor of Barbados under King Williams, a thin, brown, handsome man. Once again, let me interject. When you read in the Bible that there are lords and there are lords and gods that were sending their people to get booty, okay, to get booty and killing children and taking land, those were the kings and the gods and the lords they were talking about. Because what, what sky daddy need booty? Booty was woman, was mostly women. It was also put possession, but it was also women. What is a sky daddy doing with, with women? All right? They were talking about their nobles. They, they made themselves gods and lords. All right? And they used that book to go over the world telling people that it's a sky daddy and subjecting these people to their, um, to, you know, to be their subjects. All right? The description of the black Scottish Highlanders comes to us from a very reliable source, the English Secret Service. The data from this document was taken from the original manuscript and confirmed by his son, Spring McKay Esquire. I have a, a, a three-fold code here. The eyewitness account of John Ritson, the, the eyewitness account of, sec, of secret, secret Service Agent John McKay, and the ship's manifest, pages 135, 137, and 139 from the veteran from the veteran. If you take a man and give him false memories, a false name, and a false past, what would he become? He obviously, in our case, black African American. All right. He would become an artificial being, and that is what has happened to the so-called Negro. But you see, here's the thing: he is not telling you who made us the artificial beings. They came here with that concept. You feel me? But it was taken over by the pale man. All right, then. I, I hear you, Mr. Lee Cummings. You're telling some truth, but you ain't telling all the truth now. I hear you. The, the Negro has been made into an artificial being through the erasing of his memory. If the Negro and his father's books had his father's books, then his memory could be restored, but the books that contained his past memories have been burned. Books like the Negro Question Book series seek to restore the true memories of the so-called Negro. See the um, Three Kings on the next page. All right, so you have the Three Kings right here. All right. Wasn't there a movie called Three Kings or something like that? I think there was a movie called Three Kings. You see, they're always putting things in movies, man. Always. All right. The image found at the um, Buckleberry Bank of London shows the images of three black kings and is dated and is dated to the year 1667. There are only three Scottish kings that can fit this timeline. King James VI of Scotland, um, far right, King Charles I of Scotland, center, and King Charles II of Scotland to the left. The balls in the hands of the three kings represent world rulership and the only kings that took pictures with balls in their hands were the Byzantine kings. So like I said, they have always been trying to conquer the world. You see what I mean? Same thing. They instituted the whole world, one world, the one world new order from the very 
inception. And like I said, I'm going to end this build with a bang to prove to you once again, I know exactly what I'm talking about, all right? The Byzantine kings ruled the eastern leg of the Roman Empire, and it was said of the Black Britons in their books, they called themselves Romans. What happened to their books? King James Stuart of Scotland, the Highlander. King James the Sixth of Scotland wrote the Bas Bas Basilicon de um, Deron in response to forged books that were circulating in England concerning himself. The books was broken into three parts. The religion practiced by King James, how the prince should behave as, as a king, and the prince's personal conduct. I thought it prudent to examine the writings of King James since I read and quote from his translated Bible. In fact, the King James version of the Bible is being used across the entire world, but yet not one preacher has ever taught the words of the king, not one, including me. I feel, I feel like such an idiot in that I have never examined the ideology of this king. Who was this guy? What, what did he think? What church did he come from? What was his doctrine? We don't need conjecture, or which means guess, synonymous with guess. We have the king's writing, which allow us to, to peep into the mind of sleeping dead kings. Or king, let's do something unique. Let's eliminate the opinion of the author, which is Lee Cummings, which is himself, and the so-called scholars. Why not allow a sleeping king to speak for himself and speak he shall. King James of Scotland, the Basilicon Baron, or Boron, Be, um, Basil, or Basile, um, slash 14. Would ye know the doctrine of life and death of our Savior Christ? All right. Read the evangelist. Would ye be more particularly trained up in this school? Meditate upon the um, epistles of the apostles, and would ye be acquainted with the practices of the doctrine in the persons of the primitive church, cast up the apostles' acts, and as to a, a, a procopher, books, I omit them because I am no Baptist, as I said before. From the mouth of a sleeping king, we have this report that he was not a Catholic, but he gets deeper. If you are a Catholic, and you happen to be reading this book, I am an impartial writer. I have no interest in the faith of King James or his battles with the Catholic Church. I am just reporting the news. All right, here we go. Page 17, from King James to Prince Charles I. And therefore, I would not have you pray for the Baptists or the Baptists to be preserved from sudden death. On page 17 of the Basilica Doron, King James tells the young prince not to even pray with the Baptists or Catholics for it would mean sudden death. I place this in the section of this book because it is a lead to in to one of the greatest dramas never reported in this generation. The Catholic Church and certain religion or, re, religious organizations have shouted to the rooftop of their lungs that the King James was a Catholic, but according to his own words, he was not. Charles I, King of Scotland, did the exact thing that his father warned him, warned him about. King Charles married a Catholic um, princess, the France Queen Henrietta, and eventually led to the beheading of King Charles and the civil war in England. Beware, therefore, in this case with two extremities, the one to believe with a Baptist. I, um, I, they say in Baptist, but I'm assuming that, you know, it's current day Baptist, okay? But anyway, I'm not gonna assume, so I'm gonna leave it as Baptist, all right? Here is a small list of some of the things the Catholics believe. Sunday Sabbath, Christmas, Easter, non-observance, of the Bible's feast days and the non-observance of the Saturday Sabbath. The church worldwide used the king's book, but they have never read the words of the king himself. 
How can you use a king's book every Sunday as the um, cornerstone of your faith and yet you know nothing about the author? The churches worldwide have not heeded the words of the king, but now could, but how could they? His words have been hidden from the church for 400 years. King James is no Catholic, neither is he a Christian. Okay, let's read that again. Let's read that again. So the man who gave y'all the Bible, he's not a Catholic, nor he's a Christian. So how is, how is you people going around here talking about y'all Christians and y'all pastors teaching y'all how to be Christians using the same Bible that King James wrote, but he wasn't a Christian. Uh oh, chief, you're dropping too much of that now. King James re responded by saying he was saved without aid of Rome and Catholic is the true historic sense of the word. King James responds to the Catholics. All right. Not only having ever been brought up in that religion, which I presently profess and so cannot be properly uh, and um, heretic by their own doctrine, since I never was of their church. Let let's take a mental break from all of this reading and reason together. The Bible has a quote that says to whom you yield your members to the same are you a servant. All of the Christian churches practice the Catholic doctrine and they aren't aware of it. You don't believe me, do you? Let's look at a few things that they do in the Catholic church and compare them to the customs in your church. The Catholic church believes in a Sunday Sabbath. So do 99% of the churches worldwide. The Catholic church teaches a, whole, a holiday called Easter. The Sunday churches recognize Easter, but the original name of Easter was Ishta, and that's spelled I-S-H-T-A. Ishta or Easter was the Babylonian goddess of fertility. This is the reason that the bunny, rabbit, and eggs are its symbol. And for those of you who think bunnies lay eggs, then something is emphatically wrong with your mind, okay? The Catholic Church uses the Xmas tree as a symbol of Jesus' birth. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 10, 1 to 4, it is written, verse 1, hear you the words of the Lord, thus says the Lord. Verse 2, learn not the ways of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heaven are dismayed at them. Verse 3, the customs of the people are vain, for... For one cutteth down a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. Verse 4, they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moved not. Verse 5, they are upright as the palm tree. Verse 8, the stock is a doctrine of vanity. Verse 2, learn not the ways of the heathen. I have a question. Do you attend a church that has this custom? Yes, they do. Every Christian church, even in your own Bible, it tells you don't practice Christmas. It's a, it's, it's vanity. It's vain. It's of the pagan. But y'all are not true Christians. That's the problem. Okay. If you have, if you have land and pine trees on your property, you can see this um, vividly. You probably have been going out on your property chopping a tree down and bringing it into your house every Christmas. If you happen to live in the city, they bring the forest to you. They simply find an abandoned lot and fill it up with pine trees. No matter what route you take, you go out and you get a tree, deck it, deck it with silver and gold. You place a star on the top of the tree and the star, their, um, their, their God, um, rim, rim friend. read Acts 7, 43. And Stephon called it the star of your God. I'm rimf rimfen. I am only trying to show you that the doctrine of the Catholic Church is your church. The Catholic Church was statutes, images of Jesus all over their churches, but the Bible explicitly exp explicitly states Deuteronomy 5 8, verse 8 Thou shalt not make any graven statute or drawing, graven images of any likeness or anything that is in heaven above or that is in, in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. So even by them putting statues of Jesus in the church, 
also they're not supposed to do that. Even their Bible speak against that. Okay? Even their Bible speak against that. Verse 9. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. This is a custom of the Catholic Church. What about you, old man? Is this a custom in your church? This is the real reason that we are here today. We are not here so that you can just read a book. We are here to reason together and that we shall. I want to take you further into this discussion by showing you the mind of King Charles I and Queen Elizabeth I concerning the customs of the Catholic Church. <clears throat> All right. Book of Sports, a feat golf, King Charles I remarks upon fame. The, Catholic, the Catholics were trying to change the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday, so they began to forbid the people from playing sports and working on Sunday. The people peti um, petitioned King James concerning sports on Sunday if they are biblically forbidden to play or not. King James VI of Scotland and his son Charles I passed the laws legalizing sports on Sundays. Isn't that the same practice they have here today? Man, y'all gonna learn today, okay? Y'all gonna learn. Lawful sports. Our dear father of blessed memory, in his return from Scotland, coming through Lancashire, Lanc found that his subjects were debarred from lawful recreation upon Sunday after evening prayers ended and upon holy days. And he prudently considered that if these times were taken from them, the, the, the meaner sort who labor had who labor had all the week should have no recreations at all to refresh their spirits. And after this return, after his return, he further saw that his royal subjects in all other parts of his kingdom did suffer in the same kind. So once again, I'm showing you, right? You have to see the comparison between our culture and these people's culture. They call their people subjects. We were a village. We were a community. We lived together, all right? Yes, we had, we had K6 and we had chiefs and we had clan mothers, but the, the people were not subjects. You see what I'm saying? They brought that stuff here. I just want you to point that out in the difference between their culture and ours, all right? Their goal is to rule people, make them subjects, all right? Peasants. In his princely wisdom, published a declaration to all his loving subjects, or, or you see what I tell you? Loving subjects concerning lawful sports to be used at such times, which was printed and published in um, by his royal commandment in the year 1618, the tenure which thereafter followeth. All right, here we go. Let's proceed. Whereas upon our return the last year of Scotland, we, we did publish our pleasure touching the recreations of our people in those parts under our hand. For some causes as hereunto, moving we have thought um, good to command these our directions then given in Lancashire with a few words thereunto added and most applicable to these parts of our realms to be published to all our subjects, all right? That's why in the United States Constitution, it says what? To be a citizen of the United States, you have to be what? Born, born or naturalized and be a subject of. Y'all gonna learn today. We did just justly in our progress through Lanc 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 Lancashire, rebuke some Puritans and, and precise people and took order that he like unlawful. Carriage should not be used by any of them hereafter. Give me a second here. All right, give me a second here, guys. Once one minute. All righty. Here we are. Where, where, where are we here? Where are we? Okay. In the in the prohibiting and unlawful punishing of our good people for using their lawful recreations and honest ex exercising of exercises upon Sundays and other um, holy days. Imagine that. 
in, in their kingdoms and queendoms, people had to get permission from them to play sports. So how are you gonna tell me that those are your subjects? That that's slavery. To have recreation that was prohibited. All right? And they petitioned the king for that. Come on, man. How are you going to tell me them people were not slaves? Like I said, man, I know how to read between the lines. I ain't nobody fool, okay? After the afternoon sermon sermon or service with our own ears, we heard the general complaint of our people that they were barred from all lawful recreations, lawful recreations. So what's an unlawful recreation? Oh, man, like I said. And exercises upon Sunday afternoons after the ending of all divine service. For when shall the common people have leave to exercise, if not upon the Sundays and holidays? The common people. So let me ask you a question. What's the opposite of common people? Hmm? Why they have to be put in that category to be common people? Like I said, y'all got to read with understanding. Our pleasure is that the bishop of that diocese Take the like straight order with all the Puritans and um, precisions within the same, either con constraining them to conform themselves or to leave the country according to the laws of our kingdom and canons of our church. And so the strike equality on both hands against the commandment, the, um, the, the, the contemners of our authority and adversaries um, of our church. Now, look, look at that word here, Puritans. Who came here? Wasn't the, the, the Puritans who came? All righty then. Like I said, we're going to put this together now. We're going to put this together. King Charles said that if the, if the Catholics did not conform to his commandment, um, Sunday was not a Sabbath rest that they were to be deported out of the land. So far, the king that translated the Bible and his son did not recognize Sunday as the Sabbath day. King Charles I makes mention of the adversaries of the Church of England, Scotland, Ireland, and Britain. Who are the adversaries of the Church of Scotland, Ireland, and England? The answer is to be found, to be found on the so um, Solemn League covenant signed by King Charles I of Scotland and England. This was the King James' son, and air, see the document below. Well, you know, that's kind of like, I'm certainly sure he might blow it up, so we can't see that. I'm not even gonna try to put it in focus, all right? All right, here we go. This is a legal document, which we're talking about this document. This is a legal document, declaration of war, that was signed by the noblemen, barons, knights, gentlemen, citizens, burgesses, ministers of the gospel and, and common folk in three kingdoms accepted by the King Charles I in 1647, all right? See the blown up wording on the next page. So in 1647, like I said, all the royal nobles of Europe and England, all right, they were still black. So let me ask you a question. So then who were bringing the people here? I rest my case. I rest my case. All right, let's go. We noblemen, barons, Knights, gentlemen, citizens, burgesses, ministers of the gospel, and co um, commons of all sorts in the kingdoms of Scotland, England, and Ireland, by the providence of God, living under one king, and being one of the reformed religion, having before our eye the glory of God, and the advancement of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the honor and happiness of the king's majesty and his posterity, and the true, the true public liberty, safely and peace of the kingdoms, wherein everyone's private condition is included, and calling to mind the treacherous and bloody plots, conspiracies, attempts, and practices of the enemies of God against the true religion and professors thereof in all places, especially in these three kingdoms, ever since the reformation of religion. Remember, religion is actually an, a reinstitution of an army because a legion is an army, okay? So Christianity, Islam, Judaism, they're all armies, all right? And how much their age, power, and presumption are of late and at time increased and exercised 
whereof the deplorable state of the church and, and kingdom of Ireland, the distressed estate of the church and kingdom of England, and the dangerous state estate of the church and kingdom of Scotland are present and public testimonies we have at least after another means of um, supplication, remonstrance, protestation, and suffering for the preservation of ourselves and our religion from utter ruin and destruction, according to co commendable practice of these kingdoms in former times and the example of God's people in other nations after mature deliberation, resolved and determined to enter into a mutual and solemn league and covenant wherein we all subscribe and each one of us himself for himself with our hands lifted up to the most high God. We do swear and call in to mind the treacherous and bloody plots, plots, conspiracies, attempts, and practices of the enemies of God against the true religion and professors thereof in all places, especially in these three kingdoms ever since the reformation of religion and how much their rage, power, and presumption are, are, are of late, and at this time increased and exercised, whereof the deplorable estate of the church and kingdom of Ireland, the distressed estate of the church and kingdom of England. Now you see that word estate, right? Aren't we still, that, that, that was never part of our culture, okay? On the American continent. So now everybody's talking about, oh, well, you gotta claim your estate. That is all, that is all colonization lingo, okay? Oh man, y'all gotta, gotta read between the lines, man, but let, let, let's, let's, let's go along, all right? We're gonna break this down. And the dangerous estate of the church and kingdom of Scotland are present and public testimonies. We have now at last another, and after another means of some supplication, remonstrance, protestation, and sufferings for the preservation of ourselves and our religion from utter ruin and destruction according to the commendable practice of those kingdoms in the former times, an example of God's people in other nations after our mature deliberation. Resolved and determined to enter into the mutual and solemn league and covenant wherein we are all, I mean, well, we, we read that already, man. This is being redundant, all right? We read that already, because I'm just repeating the same thing. He's just going over that again. Solemn league, covenant, okay. So we read that part. Let us, let us continue. The missing page from our Bibles. And now, at last, by the mercy of God and the continuance of our labors, it being brought unto such a conclusion as that we have great hope that the Church of England shall reap good fruit thereby. We hold it our duty to offer it to your majesty, not only as to our king and sovereigns, but as to the principal mover and author of the work, humbly craving of your most sacred majesty, that since things of this quality have ever been subject to um, censures of ill meaning, and discount, discounted peep persons, it may receive approbation and protonage from so learned and judices. A prince as your highness is whose allowance and acceptance of our laborers or our labors shall more honor us and encourage us than all the culminations and had interpretations of other men shall dismay us. So that if on the one side we shall be traduced, speak lies about by popish persons at home or abroad who therefore will maligne us because we are poor instruments to make God's holy trueth to be vet or, or to be yet more and more known unto the people whom they desire still to keep in ignorance and darkness. This is very important introduction page is missing from your King James Bible. If you don't believe me, run and get your Bible and see if this page is present. The powers that be didn't want us to know the truth, so they came up with a different version. 
of the Bible, which eliminated the introductory page. The Apostle Paul writes, 2 um, Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 to 4, that before the coming of the Messiah, which is Christ, there would be a great falling away from the church. We were born into the great fallen, fallen, which is darkness, away, and one of the signs was the removal of the introductory page of our Bibles. No, that's of your Bibles. All right, not ours. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break and let me drink some juice. All right, I'm feeling a little bit parched. While I'm doing that, okay, once again, by all means, please show your support. Okay, show your support. That would be very much appreciated. We got some more reading to do. <sighs> Woo. Let me just share my screen real quick. And this build, this build is brought to you, okay, by Tribal Wear, original tribalwear.com, our sister Mohawk out there in California and her family doing big things. And I'm just here to support, so please go check it out. www.originaltribalwear.com men's women and children fashion tribal apparel okay that link is going to be in the description of the video all right so make sure y'all check it out support our own okay support our own <clears throat> okay Go check it out, www.originaltribalwear.com. All right, they also have a newsletter you could subscribe to. Also, all right, this portion of this build is brought to you by Simply Stoned, all right? That's another sister of ours doing her thing. Um, Yasini, all right, out there in, um, um, in Tennessee. So she's doing her thing as well, and she has her products, all right? So go ahead and um, check that out. All right, here we go. Welcome to Simply Stoned, where every stone is customized just for you. All right, so I will put the link of those um, websites in the description below um, the video, okay? Whether you're looking for jewelry for your fingers, your, 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 your wrists, you know, or pendants for your neck, all right? By all means, go ahead and um, contact our sister here and i will put that information there for you okay let's sh stop sharing and let's get back to the build and we're going to continue to do some more reading once again for those of you who coach who care to support by all means i have um my link in the in the chat i appreciate that all right thank you here we go we got a few pages to go we almost there all right we almost there almost there let me see. All right, references. All right, so yeah, we, we got a few pages to go. Okay. All right, Sunday worship. <clears throat> the the millinery petition was a petition signed by one thousand Puritan clergymen who gave a list of reforms that they wanted to see in the Church of England. The purists wanted to legalize Sunday as the official Sabbath of the English Church. King James um declined. It um declined. It is becoming obvious to me that the that the kings of Church of England did not recognize a Sunday Sabbath. Is this not consistent with the writings of King James? I am not a Catholic. Page 157. I was never a member of the church. Um, in 1569, Queen Elizabeth legalizes lawful sports on Sunday called beer, be beer baiting. King James King Charles I and Queen Elizabeth I belonged to the Church of England. Let us examine the words of the King James of Scotland concerning the union of England and Scotland. All right. The union of Scotland and England. But the union of these two pricely houses is nothing comparable to the union of two ancient and famous kingdoms, which is the one in what? Peace annexed to, to my person. 
Has not God first united these two kingdoms? These two kingdoms, both in language, religion, and similitude of manners? Yes. Has he not made us all in one island, compassed with one sea, and of itself by nature, so invisible as almost those that air or supposed to be our um, borders, themselves on late board borders, cannot distinguish nor know or discern their own limits. These two countries, being separated neither by sea nor great river, mountain nor um, strength of nature, King James VI of Scotland became the king, King James I of England. And in street language, he's saying that he was, that we have the same religion. Scotland, Ireland, Britain, and England. This is the real reason the British pulled out of the Euro. It is because the Euro nations have Catholicism as its religion and Britain is Protestant. So you see, there's more going on in the world than y'all think. There's deeper meanings to these things, all right? There's always a deeper meaning. All right, that's the image location, National Portrait of Gallery London. All right, that's Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth I. Queen Elizabeth I, all right, vetoed a bill that was introduced to Parliament to stop bull baiting on Sunday. The Queen descended and legalized this sport on Sunday. This means that she also did not recognize the Sunday as the Sabbath day. Queen Elizabeth and King James were members of the Church of England, a church that kept the, the um, dietary law, pages 22 and 23, and observed the Sabbath, um, the Saturday Sabbath. The dietary law can be found in the Bible, Leviticus um, chapter 11, 7 to 12. If we were to stop and analyze the data from the writings of King James, we would have to conclude that the Church of England was a Hebrew Israelite church based on its customs. That is true. Like I said, the Hebrew Israelites are the British, all right, the Scottish, and the Irish, all right. Um, it's uh, let me where, where, where we are, all right. King James and the Scots didn't eat pork, didn't recognize the that's the Sunday Sabbath, and they only ate fish that had fiends and scales. These are the customs of the Jews of the Bible. You decide. I don't want to skip any pages if we haven't read it, okay? <clears throat> Here we are. King James. What did King James call the Pope? Oh, here we go. And these opinions, no Pope can ever make me um, recant. Having now made this digression against the, the Antichrist, which I am sure I can better fasten upon the Pope than Balamine can do in his pretended temporal superiority over the kings. Popery is indeed the mystery of in iniquity. King James called the Pope the Antichrist. Uh oh, uh oh, drop of the day, drop of the day. King James called the Pope the Antichrist and the mystery of religion. If you follow the custom of the Catholic Church, you unknowingly follow the doctrine called the mystery of iniquity. All right, right here, boy. You know, we got to make sure we, um, this is in focus so y'all could read it for yourself. Here we go. Okay. Popery indeed, the mystery of iniquity. King James called the Pope the Antichrist and the mystery of religion. If you follow the customs of the Catholic Church, you unknowingly follow the doctrine of, the doctrine called mystery of iniquity. Paul mentions in, um, in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 to 7, that the man of sin would go into the temple of God and show himself to the world that he is God. Do you follow any of the doctrines associated with the priest who calls himself God? Let's examine some of the titles of the Pope. But even in the Bible, it says, yeah, God. So what are you talking about, Mr. Lee Cummings? I mean, the Pope ain't doing nothing wrong if he calls himself a God, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, because, hey, that's what Jesus said in Psalms and John, right? The official titles of the popes, the canon law. These words appeared in the Roman canon law to believe that our Lord God, the Pope, has not the power to decree as he is decreed. 
is to be deemed um, heretical. I, the gloss, blah, 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 say blah. All right. The Pope and God are the same. So he has all the power in heaven and earth. Pope Pius V quoted in Barclay chapter, uh, this um, numeral numbers right there, that's 10, 20, 25, 27, page 218. Catholic National 18, 1895. The Pope is not only the representation of Jesus Christ, he is Jesus Christ himself, hidden under the veil of flesh, Catholic National, um, July 1895. All right. The Pope is the supreme judge of the law of the land. He is the he is the um, vice gerent of Christ, vigilance of, of Christ. And he's not only a priest forever, but also king of kings and lord of lords. I have I have allowed King James, King Charles, Queen Elizabeth, noblemen, barons, ministers, knights, and citizens of the of the three kingdoms to speak on their own behalf. Though being dead, they declare from the grave that they declared war on the Catholic Church, the Pope and its officers. I have a nagging question. What books or manuscripts did King James and King Charles read that caused them to conclude that the Pope is the Antichrist? I began to um, dil diligently pour over the writings of King James to see if there was any hint to this pro problematic question and found the source of his argument. The very book that translated, let's take a look at the Bible that King James authorized and see what scriptures he based his theory on. Go and grab your Bible and turn them with me to the book of First Thessalonians, um, also um, chapter two, one to nine, verse three, let, let no man deceive you by any means, but that cannot come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin is revealed the son of um, perdition. Verse four, who opposes the, the exalts and himself above all that is called God or that worship or that worship so that he has so so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Verse seven, for the majesty of iniquity doeth or doeth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. In order to understand the mind of the king, we will have to visit early, earlier statements made by various popes and the Catholic church. Bear with me on this one, I really, it is really necessary. So let me ask King James, right? It's okay for you to call yourself God and Lord, but when the, when the Pope do it, it's a problem. It's a problem. You want everybody to be your subjects, but when the Pope do it, it when the Pope do it, it's a problem. Come on, man. I tell you, man. Anyway, let's proceed. All right. The, um, the, Catholic, um, the Catholic National 1985. The Pope is not only the representative, we read that already, no sense in being redundant. All right, we read that already. Remember Paul wrote in Thessalonians that he was God sitting in the temple of God. This is the reason why King James made the statement that the Pope was the Antichrist and that his doctrine was the mystery of religion. Turn your Bible with me to Revelation, Revelation 17, 1 to 18. For the sake of time, I am going to copy the entire chapter out of King James Bible. One, and that's Revelation 17, 1 to 18. All right, so we're going to read. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven um, um, veils, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will sh um, show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon the waters, too, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Um, three, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and, and saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. Pause. I want to pause for a moment to make sure you understand the importance of the seven heads and the seven horns. 
The seven heads and the seven horns hold the secret to who the woman, church, church is that is hiding the beast. So basically the church is the woman that is hiding the beast. That's what he's, that's what they're saying here, right? Um, four, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, a color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and fit and fit and was it and fitness of her fornication. Five, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Pause. Verse 5 said the woman's name was Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots. Why would the angel call this woman a mother and the mother of harlots? Nine, um, 99 percent of the world's churches teach and follow her doctrine. This is what makes the church the daughters of the harlots. Six. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the um, martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great ad admiration, continue. And the angel said unto me, wherefore did, didst thou marvel? I will, I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carry of her, which have the seven heads and 10 horns. The beast that thou sowest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into the Pedition and they that dwell on earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not yet is. In verse 8, the angel said, The people that wander who the woman on the beast is are uh, not written in the Lamb's book of life. Continue, nine, and here is the mind which have wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Pause, verse nine said, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. The head, the next thing that I did was search the World Wide Web to see what church sat on the seven hills and to my amazement, it was the Vatican. All right. So here is um, a picture of what he is talking about. All right. Let me see if I could. There we go. So you have the seven heads, right? You have Tiba River. Um, what is that? Corineal Hill, Field of Mars, Vermino Hill, Capitan Lo Capi Capital Capitolina Hill, Equaline Hill. Tibur Island, Palestine Hill, um, Salian Hill, um, Advantin Hill, and the seventh is the seventh um, Servian Hill, seven hills of Rome. Okay. So, and then he's numbering the hills. So let's look at the numbers here. All right. All right, there we go. Okay, just so you guys could take a focused look of that. And it says, the Vatican actually sits on the seven hills. This appears to be another reason why King James saw the Pope as the Antichrist and the Catholic doctrine Sunday worship with its customs as the mystery um, religion. Now, brothers and sisters, you heard what, he, what they say, right? This is why King James said that the Pope was the Antichrist. But I'm going to show y'all something to conclude this build. I'm going to end this with a bang. All right. I'm going to end this with a bang. Just hold on to your seats. All right. Make sure your seats, your seat belt is, is fastened because we are, we, we, we're going for a ride. All right. Number 11. And the beast that was and is not, even, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into um, perdition. Perdition. And 12. And the 10 horns which thou sowest are 10 kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Pause and warning. All right. Verse 11 says that the 10 kings shall give their power to the beast. Who are the 10 kings? The answer is the European Union. They call themselves the 10. 
the ten horns. Bible prophecy foretells a nation military alliance that will rise out of the revived Roman Empire, the European Union, and will come under the control of the Antichrist. And that's in Daniel 7, chapter 7, 23 to, 20, um, to 24. Okay. Unknown to many Christians, a 10 nation military alliance appeared in Europe in 1995 called the Western European Union or the Brussels Treaty Powers. Like I told you what he says, military, right? They're all military. Christian is military. Islam is military. Judaism is military. They're all military. All right. Even your religion, Mr. Lee Cummins, is a military. All right. These 10 nations are members of both NATO and the European Union. What about them together? Um, what bound them together was a mutual defense obligation under the Article 5 of the modified Brussels Treaty, which meant that an attack against um, one would be an attack against all. To learn why this alliance interests to students of prophecy, read overview, read overview. Yet, on March 31st, 2010, the 10 nations announced that they have that they had agreed to terminate their alliance and transfer the Western European Union powers to the European Union, which under the Lisbon Treaty has developed a mutual defense obligation that includes all EU member states. The Western European Union's act, um, activities are scheduled to wrap up by June, June 2011. The 10 nations that made up the alliance were Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, and UK. If you have been following the news, you are aware that Britain pulled out of the And, but they 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 trying they trying they, they they just shut me out, okay. Everything just shut down. I literally had to man. Y'all can't stop this bill, man. Y'all can't stop it, okay. Y'all can't stop it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can't stop it. Where we at? We just read the ten horns. All right, the UK, the nation suspect Turkey. All right, we read that. Let me see where we at. The numbers, I suspect, let me see, in the UK, all right? If you have been following the news, okay, we did that. In fact, we know that Britain would pull out because she is a protestant nation. I suspect that Turkey will be admitted into the, into the number, but don't quote me on this. I want to take a few minutes of your time to show you. Well, yeah, brother, they, they, man, the whole thing, they just shut it down. My computer literally shut off. But it's all good. I, I got a backup for that, though. They ain't stopping this bill. I'll tell you that. All right. The and that these ten kings was prophet Daniel. Daniel two one um to four um four nine. Daniel interpreted a dream of the king of Babylon, whose name was ne Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel told the king that his dream about a, a statue which a head of gold. Daniel um second chapter and a stone cut out of the mountain. Not made with hands, Daniel went on, to, on, went on went on to tell the king that the stone hit the image on its feet, ten toes. In Daniel 2, chapter, um, chapter 2, 40, 41 to 45, the
the prophet says that in the days of three kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. The reason the stone hit the image on the feet is, sim is simple. The only thing left on the statute after 2,600 years is the feet, the, the toes, the, the 10 toes of the European common market. Go to the Bible study at your church and ask your preacher about the European Union toes. He should know this. If he doesn't, you have a problem. 13, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Pause. The European Union currency is proof indeed that the European Union is a single-minded. The euro is one money currently cu currency that connects the um, all the markets of the union. My mother used to, used to say that a preacher ought to be able to see something. Apostle John had some pretty good eyesight. This shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and, and faithful. If you, if you live in a NATO or EU nation, you are in great danger. If you live in a nation that is a member of NATO or the European Union, your leaders have been deceived by the Antichrist. By the Antichrist, the Pope had the Catholic religion installed as the official religion of the European Union. The Apostle John said that the European Union will give their power to the beast and that they would make war against Jesus on his return to earth. He ain't coming back. The book of Zechariah gives a description of what Jesus will do to the European Union when he begins to war against them. See Zechariah, Zechariah 14, 12, verse 12. And this shall be the plague where with the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues and, and consume away in their mouths. The Antichrist is preparing the people of this world to fight against Jesus as his second coming by exposing the, um, the world to alien movies. The idea is to plant the seed of doubt in your minds that the coming Messiah, um, WSHW, is an alien and not Jesus Christ. When you get the time, read the, um, the sixth chapter of Revelation and you will see a scene in which the heavens will, will back like a scroll. The world will see the Father and Jesus for up to 13 months. So the world will see, so hold up. The world will see the Father and Jesus. So why am to the mother? Why am to the Virgin Mary? I thought that was Jesus' mother. Like, come on, man. I'm just saying, man. It, 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 you know, this, 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 this indoctrinations. You speak of the world will see the Father and Jesus the Son for 13 months, but they will not see the mother. Where's the mother at? All right, then. What they will see will astonish them. They will see a Jesus that has hair like lamb, wool, Revelation 1, 4, and fit like, look like, like it had been burned in a furnace. The world will see a black Jesus we walk around every day. They see us. They know who we are. So what's your point? Anyway, let's proceed. In the day, the world is going to have a make, make a tough decision. Can they worship a black God? It is written that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Now that we have identified the false prophet Pope and the European Union, ten horns, we might as well bring the military genius or the Holy Roman Empire. Here we go. In the book of Revelation, Revelation 1, um, 13, 3, John is quoted saying, who is able to make war with the beast? In verse 11, he says, a beast come up from the earth, which had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke as a dragon. Verse 12, he exercises all the powers of the first beast before him and causes the world to worship the beast whose deadly wound was healed. We have a beast with two different personalities. 
The one beast is a warrior and the second beast is a, relig a religious figure. The religious person is the Pope and the warlike beast is the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, guess who's trying to bring back the Holy Roman Empire? What, what did I tell what did I tell y'all before? Mm. Like I said, man, y'all better realize. All right, I know what I'm talking about. Is this is there such a thing as a Holy Roman Empire in our generation? The last Holy Roman Empire was Otto van Habsburg, Habsburg, who has been who has since died, but the Habsburg House has not. Conclusion: If 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 a big if, the European reinstitute the divine right of kings, the heir of the Holy Roman Empire would be Karl Habsburg. Is he the military general that will lead the European Union? I can't realistically sit here and say that this is the guy, but he fits the description. The heir of the Holy Roman Empire, Karl Habsburg, Habsburg sits at the UN at the United Nations as an observer and the Pope sits at the United Nations as the uh, as an observer. Theoretically, you have the beast and the false prophet sitting together at the um, United Nations. This ends the religious section of this book. May God bless you now. Nah, well, maybe bless you, Mr. Lee Cummins, but I am blessed, okay? You in all of your endeavors, endeavors and I sincerely thank you for supporting the Negro Question book series without your purchasing of this book question, um, this question book series and the spreading of the word. This work um, would, would, would have died in 2011. I humbly thank you for the bottom of my heart. Love you, contact, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we have references, all right? Just in case if you guys want some of the references, let me just um, kind of like, See if I could put that in focus for you. All right, here we go. Okay, so you have all of those references, just in case you wanna re reference some of what he's talking about, because it's always good to do your own cross-referencing and your own research, all right? So here it is, all right? Okay, here we go. Let me see if there's anything important here. More references continued, okay? Here we go. So y'all could pause it and take a look at the references. All right. Let me see if I could get that in focus. All right, there we go. All right. That's some of the references. All right, here we go. Let's go on the next page. More references right here. So just so you guys could know, so you can do your own research, okay? Let me see what else we have. More references right here. You could pause the video. Then we have maps, all right? So that basically saying where he got all his stuff from, okay? So brothers and sisters, that's the conclusion of the book, The Negro Question, part six, the 13 black colonies, all right? I'm going to shut up my camera for a second while you guys build in the chat so I could um, rearrange um, the position of the camera. see here oh man okay cool all right bring back the camera let me see if my camera is good all right so what's good what's good what's good y'all man what's good what's good what's good Woo! all right so that concludes man you know um part three well the part three build of the negro question um, I hope you guys, um, you know, just enjoyed that. I, yeah, personally, me, I enjoyed, um, you know, I enjoyed reading the book. 
you know, um, and I enjoyed reading it with you, you know what I mean? Because like I said, I read it twice, you know, just to really kind of digest the information. That's my third time reading it, and the third time was with you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, thank you, family. I appreciate that. Like I told y'all before, I was gonna end this with a bang, all right? I was gonna end this with a bang, so here we go. Here goes the grand finale, the grand finale. Let me know if y'all ready for the grand finale right now. Let me know if y'all ready for that. Once again, please, support, 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 support. All right, show some love, show some love, family, show some love, okay? Let me know if y'all ready for the grand finale, man. Y'all ready for the grand finale? Hit that like button right now. Type one. Let's let's do this. I got the I got the the dagger right there to just shut everything down. All right. Y'all ready for the grand finale? Let me know. Let me drink some juice in the meantime. Are y'all ready for the grand finale? If you're not ready, let me know. I won't give it to y'all. All right, y'all ready? All right, here we go. Mm, mm, mm. We about to do this right now. The grand finale is coming right now. Just to, just to solidify everything we've been talking about. Let's do this. Share the screen. Share the screen. Share the screen, family. We are doing this right now. Grand finale. Like I told y'all before, when I'm talking, I know what I'm talking about. Y'all think it's the pale man that's running things in this world? Let me really show you who's running things. Let me show y'all who's running things. Check this out. Aha. Check this out. That's the Pope right here, okay? Check this out. Pope Francis. Let me show y'all who's running things in this world. Y'all think it's the Pope? Y'all think it's this pale people? Let me show y'all the deal. Check this out. Like I told y'all before, man, I'm, 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 I'm just dropping it. Dropping it like it's hot. Pause right here. Who do you see the Pope bowing to? All right. I know we have a little um a little delay right now, right? But you see right there, right? A woman was trying to touch his hand. Yo, he smacked her. <laughs> Yo, the Pope, the Pope is gangster. Let me look. Look who look who the Pope is bowing to. I keep telling y'all, y'all think it's the pale man who run this world? I keep telling you, man, the real nobles are still here. They are still here. Okay. Y'all getting played. But look, I'm gonna show y'all. Look who the true nobles are. You see who the Pope got a bow to? Let me show y'all once more. Y'all think she and I were playing, huh? Let me show y'all. Let's do this again. Look, okay? Look the nobles. Look them right there. See who he's bowing to. Oh man, oh come on man, stop it man. Like That's a, that's a sister right there.
And those those are the rough chops. So y'all pretty much get the idea, all right? But I just want to, like I said, I just want to show you again, all right? Show you again. Y'all think it's a game? Bibles right there? Right there. Look, right there. A bunch of Bibles. Holy Bibles. Let me show y'all. A stack of Bibles to get ready to give to the world. Look at the Bibles right here. Right there on the right. Bottom right. Bottom right. Okay? Look at them Bibles right here. All them Bibles getting ready to go out. Okay? sister right there that's one of that's that's one of the sisters right there okay one of the nobles gotta get them on his knees want y'all to know man all right just want y'all to know all right that's the grand finale right there put the nail in the coffin like I, i've been telling y'all from the very very inception and look at these nobles that's running the world they don't look like our people they're not american aboriginals you feel me so when i keep telling you the game that's being played here trying to take our people and make them other people so that they could be under these people now y'all see what I'm talking about. Ah, yeah. They're not our people. You feel me? And when you see he went, when he went to um the, the, the Rothschilds, right? He didn't get them on his knees because they are not the true royals. He kissed their hands, but he didn't get down. He got them on his knees for the black ones because those are the true royals of the world. They're the, run, run, they're the ones running things. So when I, when I keep telling y'all, Stop playing these games, okay? Stop playing these games with this black and white and the white man is the cracker. Stop playing that because the devil looks just like you, okay? So if the Antichrist, if the Antichrist is the Pope and the Antichrist got to bow to this black man, then who's the real Antichrist? All right then, all right then, okay? All right then, I rest my case. I rest my case. Period. Okay? So if y'all want to keep playing these games, okay, and let people take you out of who you are as an American indigenous, American Indian, American Aboriginal to be anything else, just know what's happening. Okay? So the war is still on. I keep telling you people, man, the people, the devil look just like you. So stop thinking the pill man is your enemy. I'm not saying they're not doing their dirt, but I'm just trying to make you open up and see the big picture. Who is running this world? Who is calling themselves the true gods? Yes, we are the true gods, yes, but they are the ones that's doing everything that's happening around the world right now, okay? So pay attention to that. Because if you see the movie, The Wiz, all right? When you pull back the curtain, 
I'm telling you, surprised that the Wiz look just like you. All right? So that's it, man. That's it. So I'm, I'm good, man. <laughs> John said I won't be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> Yo, that's, that's funny. Man. That's funny, bro. That's funny, man. Well, family, you know what, man? Once again, I just wanted to share that information with y'all to let you know what's going on. You see what I'm saying? So, so in the continuation of all this, don't just think the battle is just here. This is a whole lot bigger and deeper than what people think it is, okay? It's bigger and deeper than what you think it really is, family. You feel me? It is. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's just the tip of the iceberg. You feel me? For real, for real. <laughs> All right? So know what it is. So once again, man, you know, like I said, show your appreciation, man, show some love. Because this takes a lot of time, research, and bringing that information to y'all. I don't feel like I need to be charging y'all for that information. I just share it because of the love. You feel me? So reciprocate and, and, and support. You know what I mean? So thank you. Oh, you guys are absolutely welcome, man. Absolutely welcome. Share the information. Um, what I'm going to do is, like I said, the next build, I'm not sure when it's going to be or what it's going to be about, but we, we got a lot of reading to do. I show you all the books. We got a lot of reading to do. So... We're going to continue to read, all right? And um, reading is fun for the mental, so let's let's do this. Once more, don't forget to go to um, the, the website. Let me take it um, and put it, um, tri you know, originaltribalware.com. Let me take that and put that in the link for you guys, all right? Okay. Originaltribalware.com. Put that in the link for you guys. Also, also www.simplystoned, you know what I mean? Get your stones, you know, for that energy work, all right? Because I'm telling you, man, what we're dealing with right now, you know, that's why we got to get back in tune with nature, man. That's why we got to get back in tune with nature. That's why we got to get back in tune with our original self because we got to call our ancestors down, okay? These people's gods ain't our gods, family, all right? And it's so right now, you cannot really tell who is who because... A lot of these people that's in these churches, that's their people. A lot of people that's walking around, even some of them that, that's calling themselves American Indians, that's their people. That's the messed up thing. And a lot of people that's calling themselves everything else, they are not everything else. They are actually American Indians. So it's like, how do you know who's who? But the truth of the matter is what we know for sure, we are all, we all mixed up. And we have to know there's a higher power trying to keep everybody down. So everything you think, everything you, that's happening in the world, all the wars, all the, the you know, the, the hurricanes, the earthquakes, even right now. In fact, let me see if I could, if I could find it and, sh and share that with you guys before I, before I get out of here. All right. Let me see if I can share that for you. I'll um, share, share this with y'all. Give me a second. Let me find it. Because people think it's a game, man. This is not a game out here, man. It's not a game. It's not a game out here. I keep telling y'all, it's real. Okay, it's real. Let me see if I can find something for you guys real quick. All right, let me see. Where is that at? Um, I know I had it. Let me see if that's it right here. I want to find something for you guys real quick. Let me see if I could, um, before I get out of here. Let me see if I could double click on that. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to see, save forward, save. Um, let me see if I could save that and then View and saved. That's what I want to do. Let me just show y'all some of the powers that these people have. All right. Let me just show y'all some of these things. And it's not going to come to any surprise. It shouldn't come as any surprise to you guys. All right. But I'm 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 gonna um share that. Let me see um right here. 
Come on, man. Hold up. This is being done looted. Ooh. Come on, come on, come on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's like every time I want to show something, it's like, what's up with that now? Let's see. Let me see. Give me a second here, guys. Go ahead and do your thing. In the meantime, why is it downloading again? I'm trying to show you guys a video, but it's, it looked like it's downloading on my computer. So give me, give me a few seconds, all right? Give me a few seconds while, while it's downloading. All right, I'll be right back. That video should be that video should be uploaded right now. Uh, let me see. All right, I think it's done. All right, let me see if I can open that up. Open that video up right now. Right now. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm back. Trying to open up this video. Let me see if I can show you guys this real quick to let y'all know some of the things that's happening even in Puerto Rico right now. Okay, what's happening in Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, all right, I'm gonna share my screen right now, guys. Give me a second. Share screen. And that's actually happening in Puerto Rico right now, okay? Here we go. I want the world to know what is happening in Puerto Rico. And I want everybody to viral this and listen closely. I work with the government of Puerto Rico, natural resources. I like to inform everybody to listen, listen to what's going on because Puerto Rico, the people, the majority are naive. I follow what's going on. They are pumping crude oil out of southern part of Ponce, maybe five to ten miles out with oil rigs. They're drilling. They are drilling and they're hitting the plates that are not controlling the island, which it shakes. They are also pumping gas, natural gas, and this is forming earthquakes. They're saying that these are natural disasters, but the natural disaster is not natural. It's caused by human negligence. They are pumping oil out of Puerto Rico, the southern part, five, 10 miles south, in the region where Venezuela is also pumping their oil out. They hit the plates, and this is the problem that's causing the government is going to be estimating 234 million barrels a day. They have ships out there are just collecting oil. And I want everybody to know 
what's going on. This is not a natural disaster. Their disaster is making the governments, where the governments are not doing anything about it, which they're going to profit. And if your house is destroyed during this ordeal, they're going to call FEMA. They're going to try to help you out. But it's not a natural disaster. The local governments of Puerto Rico are, are going to make sure that they're going to get their profit just like the United States is, the federal government. And nothing's being said that this is happening. They only told you a natural earthquake disaster is happening. Please viral this so that everybody can know what's going on. Please. All right, so here we go. So once again, man, let me all know, man. You, you know, it's it's this thing is deep. You see what I'm saying? And you have to know what we are what we are dealing with and what we are facing. All right. They are very, very evil people in the world. And I'm telling you, man, those people that's at the top of that chain, I'm telling you, they're darker than me and you. I keep telling you all that from the very inception. But you see, I had to make sure that I got all my information together and have the ancestors guide me into the right build at the right time. You have to know what the deal is. So we got a lot of spiritual work to do. I mean, why do you think people around the world are rising up against governments because they are seeing the evil firsthand? It's only right here in the, in the mainland of the United States, people are asleep and people are passive and fearful. You feel me? So y'all gotta know what's going on. This is real. It's real. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Australia is burning down. I mean, man, it's, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. So instead of we coming together and stepping up and do what we got to do, you got people out there playing games, fighting everybody's for self. I'm, I'm telling you, it's crazy, man. You know, it's crazy. That's why, you know, um, 50 Cent said it's one of his raps, man. Listen, death got to be easy because life is hard. You feel me? Who wants to be, who, I mean, I'm just saying, you, you know, so this, like I said, man, I don't even know how to, to put it in words. And I, I, I'm a man, I don't, I don't get lost for words often, but I just want you to know, man, how crazy this is. All right. <laughs> nah, man, listen, all that work and all that stuff is an illusion. Paying rent, all that stuff is an, is an illusion. That's what they're giving you to keep you distracted. All of that is a distraction. Let me ask you a question, okay? And I'm glad you said that, Michael. Let me ask you a question. Do you see animals in nature paying rent? Do you see animals in nature buying food? Do you see animals in nature going on their knees and praying? You see what I'm saying? All that stuff is an illusion, family. We're not supposed to be paying rent. We're not supposed to be working, period. Not that kind of work. Our work was just building, getting creative, doing our own thing. But now, think about it. You got to go work for the same people, all right, that are actually immigrants in our home. Why are the original people working for immigrants? Something is emphatically wrong with that. And if we as a people, we can't wake up and open up our eyes and see what's going on, man, I'm telling you, history is going to repeat itself. It's already happening. It's already happening. So that's what's really going on right now. Okay? The so-called black nobles of the world, they want to take back over, and then you have the, the, the so-called white nobles of the world fighting them. And now we always caught in the middle, the people. This is all about the have and the have-nots, family. This ain't got nothing to do with color. It's the have and the have-nots. But they're trying to push it like it's about color. It didn't start off as that. You feel me? It may appear like that because everybody's looking at black. Everybody's looking at white, but they're not looking at the gray area. So my job is to show you the gray area to open up your mind so you could see what's really going on. Get away from the distractions. You feel me? Get away from the distractions. And I promise you, it's not going to take a lot of us to change this around because all this is a literally our imagination. It's a projection of our minds. We are projecting this. So if there are people that's projecting that reality, then you need something to rebuttal it. 
Okay, you need something to counteract what they're doing, which is people like us with the like minds. We gotta find places where we find pockets. 10, 15, 20, 100 of us in one place, another 100 in another place, another 50 somewhere, and we all could meditate at the same time and fight these evil people, man. But too many people are wrong playing. But I'm gonna say this though, all right? We are right on time. We are right on time. And those of us that have to come together, all right, to bring this awareness, all right, to pull the energies down of our ancestors, we are gonna, we trust me, we are gonna be in the right place at the right time, all right? Because our world ain't going nowhere. They can't destroy our world. They can't, because in the beginning it was good. So therefore, in the end, in the end, it will be good. Because evil could never outdo good. So we are victorious. So let us just keep doing what we are doing. Keep building, keep connecting, keep vibing, keep vibrating on that high frequency. Keep that synergy alive. You feel me? And that's all we gotta do because it's all in the mind. We don't have to pick up a gun. We don't have to pick up a knife. You don't even have to leave your home. It's all in your mind. Today or tomorrow, you just wake up and say, listen, ain't nobody going to work. Ain't nobody paying rent. Ain't nobody paying no light bill, gas bill, phone bill. Let them put all 350 something million people in jail. Let me see how that's gonna happen. The people are the ones enslaving themselves. You feel me? It is all voluntary. If everybody wake up next week, in fact, not even next week, by Friday, everybody say, listen, we ain't going to work. We ain't paying no bills. We ain't paying no rent. We ain't paying nothing. Let me see what's going to happen. It, it's all in your mind. That's it. You give it the energy and you make it real. Stop being a slave. You feel me? It, it, it's yes, one man, one woman could make moves, but just imagine if everybody decided, okay, you know what, man, we had enough. And there are people around the world right now, okay? People around the world right now that said they had enough and they're standing up and they're fighting. How is that we are on the mainland in the United States and everybody's trying to come here with the most opportunities and everybody's sleep? Everybody's sleep. What's going on? Or the majority of people, 95%, 98% of the population in the United States is sleep. What's up? Come on. All that stuff is voluntary, man. How could people tell you the Mosai, the Creator, whatever the Great Spirit, whatever you want to call it, God, Buddha, Allah, Zeus, it doesn't matter. There is only one source. And we came here to live life and experience life. How do we have these people got us paid in rent? Come on, man. Buying food. When the most I said, listen, all that I give you for so you could have dominion over that. Am I the only one that's seeing this? Am I the only one that's willing to stand up and be the God that I am? Come on, man. Nah, man. Like, you know, life is better than this. All right, I didn't manifest here to come be nobody's damn slave. I don't know about y'all. You feel me? So right now, I just wish I had the you know the, the the ability like my ancestors did, and just go lay down and let my I am leave and go and take a long vacation, leave this planet for this earth or this realm for at least five or six years and come back. Go experience something different because there got to be more than this. Okay, this can be life. Getting up every single day, going to punch in the clock. You have to run to bring your children to school. If you're late, they, they put it on a card. Late once, late twice, late three times, detention. I mean, you cannot correct your children. I mean, yo, it's just, nah, that's not life. This is not life, family. That's not life. It's called slavery, okay? Stop being a slave because you're supposed to live your life, all right? Live your life without any inhabitations. As long as we respect each other, it's very simple. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. 
does the mutual law of respect. You see what I'm saying? That's it. But somehow we forgot that basic fundamental law. I'm going to treat you with love. You treat me with love. That's it. And, and once we could do that, we good. But they have to keep people divided. They have to play the color games. You know what I'm saying? They have to put the black versus the white. While in the gray area, it's actually the black and the white that's on top doing it. You know what I'm saying? Look at the people that the Pope was bowing, bowing down to. Man, they, shoot, they look like this. Come on. Those are not our people. They're not American Aborigines. We had our own. So we got to step back and have our own again. That's why we got to unite. That's why it's imperative that we unite. All right? Or else we'll be facing another a great demise. Okay? We have to create something better for our children. So I'm not going to continue to stay here and, you know, preach to the choir. Because you already, I'm certainly sure you already know what I'm saying. So I've already given the lesson. All right? Drop the information. I'm going to con conclude this build. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part, all right, of this build. I appreciate your energy, and I'm sending you positive energy, positive vibes, and send, I'm sending love out there into the universe. And hopefully, as a people, we could come together and work something out, because what we live in is not life, all right? It doesn't make sense that every other ethnic group comes into the Americas and live the American dream, while the original American lives a nightmare. Okay, something got to change. So with that being said, thank you. And once again, here's the link if you feel like you want to support. I appreciate that. Enjoy the rest of your continuation, and we'll talk soon. All right? Peace. You guys are absolutely welcome. Thanks.